It's Jennifer Brown, the director of Baca Wines. I'm so excited to be here with another happy hour. We have such a special guest, Willie Garson. You know him from such iconic roles um, as Mozzie on White Collar and my personal favorite, Stanford Blatch on Sex and the City. He's a prolific actor that's been in so many different shows and we're really lucky to be having a glass of wine with him here today. Um, you may remember his character on um, White Collar was often called Winosaurus because he loved wine. So it'll be fun to actually have a glass of wine with him here live on Instagram. So make sure that any questions that you have, feel free to type them in the chat. He'll be joining us in just a minute. Um, but we're gonna have also a little bit of our marbles Zinfandel today. So open up your glass of wine so we can all enjoy this in our happy hour. Um, if you haven't visited us in Healdsburg, our tasting room is open and we're visiting guests and um, having a lot of fun out there. We've got some great experiences. The Baca tasting flight is there. The Walt tasting flight is there. We have um, so many wonderful experiences that you guys will just really enjoy. Um, so Willie's gonna join us in just a second but I'll tell you a little bit more about this wine that I'm gonna be drinking. Mm, it's one of my favorite Zinfandels that we make and it comes from Napa, which is an unusual place um, for a lot of Zinfandels because um, most of it's actually grown over in Sonoma. So this is a really special vineyard that's over in Calistoga. Um, let me know what you guys are drinking in the chat. I'd love to hear what everyone's up to. Um, we're gonna have so much fun today. And I know we have a ton of Willie's huge fans. So make sure that you ask any questions. Willie said he's happy to answer questions from you guys. We're gonna have a lot of fun and really just talk about so many different topics. Hey, Willie, how are you? I'm well, I'll be there in a second. <laughs> and I pour the bowls. Perfect. I'm pretty excited. Oh, well, cheers to you. Cheers to you. Oh, so nice to meet you. Mm. So you're in LA. What have you been up to today? Delicious. Oh, thank you. Today, um, I started drinking wine at 9 a.m. <laughs> like most days. Yeah, um, sounds like a good day, normal day. I wasn't drinking good wine like this. <laughs> I, I, you know, most people, I know, like, the, the rule at, like, dinner parties is, like, you start good. Yeah, and yeah, then, and you and gradually then get worse. Yeah. Work <laughs> later with no one I go the other way. I start with garbage, and then <laughs> really have a great bottle of wine. Right around now, I'm happy. <laughs> um, for your fans who probably feel like they know everything about you, one thing I learned about you today is that you and I are both from wine families. Um, I'm third generation of the Hall family. This is um, our Baca wines. But you also come from um, a big wine family on the East Coast. Can you tell everyone about it? I do. So my, my, my grandfather and his brothers uh, came to America during Prohibition, and they started running liquor illegally um, for a very famous gangster named Longy Wilman. Longy Wilman. Uh, was very famous and supplied all the liquor for the new, uh, the outposts of Las Vegas and, and many places around the country. And then when, when Prohibition ended, my grandfather and his brothers opened a winery in central New Jersey. Um, that was basically mostly industrial wine. Like, um, if like Progresso uses a billion gallons of wine, Okay. In one of their soup recipes, they would Got buy it. it. So, um, those kind of wines and and uh, drunk drunk wines, like drunk. <laughs> <laughs> wines that you get that you can get drunk on. <laughs> I say it's always important to buy wine by the gallon. So if you <laughs> if you have any opportunity <laughs> to buy a gallon jug of wine, I say go for it. Okay. All right. That's a good tip. It's a great tip. I'm going to pitch it to you and to your mom, Kath, about, you know, maybe, like, for example, this delicious marble Zinfandel, I would prefer it if it was a gallon jug. A gallon jug. 
pulled over my shoulder and go like this, like in a gown. <laughs> I will definitely run that by our um, sort of internal team and maybe we could do some, um, what do you call it, uh, product marketing uh, challenges and we'll run it by you. If you hired me, if you hired me as the head of your research and development department, uh -huh. um, yeah. this would be my first goal as a member of the staff. <laughs> But you would need a lot of gallons for you probably to like do the research in the beginning before we then also came up with the, the end product, I would think. My, my, my mother, I, so I grew up in the 70s. And in the 70s, out of nowhere, and it's just not to denigrate, because I'm sure there's wonderful ones. But in the 70s, it got really popular. Uh, box wine was like a new thing. Yeah. Yeah, and my mother would always have a box of wine working in the, in the refrigerator. But... It wasn't good ones. It was bad ones. Now I'm sure they make totally fun ones. I bet there are some good ones in boxes. I haven't had a lot myself, um, but maybe we'll add that to our research and development. You killed a couple of boxes this morning. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, okay, so you have people, well, we both have people from all over, from Ireland, hey guys, India. You have a fan from Trenton, New Jersey, which I don't know where you're from in New Jersey originally. <laughs> So exciting. Um, they should move. No, uh, so Trenton, New Jersey is where my father, it's about probably an hour from where I'm from in New Jersey, okay. but it's where my father went to college. He went to Ryder College in Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, you went to Wesleyan, is that right? Yeah, did you yeah. study drama in college? Did you know you were going to become an actor? Um. Well, here's the thing. I was an actor when I was 13 is when I started working. So right. I knew I was an actor. So I really spent my time uh, trying to find something else to major in. So I made Wesleyan, you could make your own degree. Mm -hmm. so I combined uh, theater and psychology. So oh. I, I did a double degree at the same time. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I bet that helped. I bet psychology helped you a lot too. That's that's why I picked it. I thought, well, this would be helpful and like teach me about what I'm acting about, what people yeah. are like, inside. Like, uh, I I think it was great for me. For me, it was great. Uh, you know, everyone's on their own path. I, as my kid now in college is majoring in basically nothing. So, so it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> Does he know what he wants to do yet? Uh, I mean, he's going into junior year, so now is when he really has to declare. Yeah. Um, but he says psychology, but he wants to he wants to help people. I'm, I'm, my guess is he'll end up. What What's always been interesting to him is kind of the combination of social impact mm -hmm. and business. So, like, you can work at a business that does also does good for society. Mm -hmm. So. Like his internship this summer is with Discovery Networks, it's a huge company, and uh, they have the social impact department. So I think he'll end up in some kind of larger space with how they can help people. That's wonderful. I mean, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, having the double bottom line for those kinds of companies is, um, you know, such a wonderful goal. Because obviously, as a company, you have to be profitable. But maybe and and also that the the concept of maybe helping people right. doesn't have to be a lose business situation. Right, it can be a win win for everyone. So, I mean, if only every business could be like that, it would be wonderful. It's hard. I mean, it's it's hard because some businesses can't. If you have a television repair business, it's really hard to give back if you're just scraping by. Um, <laughs> it's hard for that to translate into. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess other than like the joy that you're giving someone to be able to watch television, but. Which I'm a big fan of spreading that joy. I like to be in <laughs> so yes, that is true. Yeah. Um, well, for those of you guys. Just let me ask you a question. Honestly, sure. over the last year and a half, uh -huh. where would we have been okay. without television? I mean, honestly. I think we all would be in severe depression I mean, maybe we already all are, or some of us are, but I think it would be so much worse. But it saved our lives. It really I mean, did. it really did. Yeah. No, from, from Tiger King to, you know, so many better shows, there's just so many wonderful uh, pieces of entertainment. I mean, it's, it's insanity. 
Anyway, go, what was your next question? No, and, and I'm, I'm grateful for you, too, to provide us so many amazing television shows that we can all watch. So thank you for playing such beautiful characters. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to be hired. I just show up, but thank you. Well, you bring a lot with you when you show up. Um, uh, well, I was going to tell all your fans who are watching, I know you have a ton of white collar fans who are chatting away. Please um, feel free to ask questions. I think your game, right, Willie, to answer some yeah, audience questions. Okay. Oh, I see them now. I, I'm not good at the technology, but now I see that. Yeah, I won't tell anyone. Um, but if I see some good questions, I'll ask them. So, or if you see something, feel free. Um, looks like um, just getting a lot of love over here from people. There's, but... there's, a lot of white, there's a lot of white collar love. The Sex and the City love um, is not really uh, technology based. Oh, that's interesting. There's the white collar, because while white collar was on, it came out later. Yeah. technology was a thing. But when Sex and the City came on, you know, we were like riding horses to work. I mean, like that's... <laughs> that's so interesting, because you know, I was in college when Sex and the City was a huge hit. And I remember every Friday night in my sorority, um, we would all gather together. And like, if you made a sound when Sex and the City came on, you were like in so much trouble. I think one time I had a cough and I was like kicked out of the room um, because like people were just so fixated, especially if I had anything to do with Carrie and Mr. Big. Um, but um, where, um, where did you go to college? I went to Northwestern in Evanston, Illinois. I know it, of course. I knew it. The best. The yeah. best. The Gary Marshall School of Theater. Exactly. I know we have a wonderful theater program. I didn't go to it, but it's a wonderful program. Um, yeah, it's a big... Uh, it's a it's a big program there, and I knew a lot of kids because I was a kid actor. So a lot of kids I knew went to college were going there for that. So, yeah. well, uh, we just got a question from Andras who said um, you've played so many prolific characters from Stanford Blatch to Mozzie to so many more NYPD Blue and and such. Um, what character was the most fun for you to play? Um, you know, it's always it's always the one you're playing at that time. It's the most fun because you're in it. It's pretty fun, usually. Um, certainly, it's like Sex in the City was really fun because Sarah, Jessica, and I are ve really dear friends mm -hmm. in life. So we would be hanging out together anyway. If, if one of us was not on the show, we would have hung out anyway. Um, yeah. and, and quietly, we are making more episodes. We're making 10 more episodes. Um, oh, that's so exciting. So okay. that, so that, we won't that's always been fun, and it's also gone on forever. I mean, we started working on the pilot in 1995. Here we are, you know, 25 years later, and we're still dealing with it. Um, Mozzie was really fun because it was the most uh, like myself. It was the most similar to myself. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun, and I could... I was allowed to make up a lot of the jokes and write the dialogue, and it's where it's where I started directing, and you know, so white collar was a really special place in my heart. But they're but they're all great when when they they basically moved the version of Mozzie to Hawaii Five O, uh -huh. and that was great because it's Hawaii, and uh, uh, NYPD Blue was great. I mean, it's, you know, it's uh, you they're, a lot of fun. They're great while you're doing them. So. I bet, and, and I feel like, especially the way you play characters, you just really get into them, so I'm sure it's really fun to take on these personas, but I don't want to um, skip over what you said a second ago in confidence with us here, that um, you're filming new episodes. That's so exciting. I'm so, and I, people are freaking out in the comments, so um, Good. that's really, really Good. Exciting. Freak out. They should all freak out. <laughs> um, we did get one question about Sex in the City, which was, remember that episode, um, I think Hannah asked this, um, the episode where you went to the bar and you were in your underwear, was that awkward to film? The one where you um, had to meet the person that you met? Of um, course it was awkward. Where, oh, where I go to meet Rick Nine Plus? Yes, 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 yes that one. Really yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, that was really awkward. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 show would write, the show would write things to try and embarrass me. Like that was their goal. Oh, really? <laughs> Um, so that was definitely one of them. I'd say the the dolls, uh, the dolls on the bed. That was also awesome. so written only to embarrass me. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are such a good like family. 
um, at Sex and the City? We really, you know, it really did operate as, you know, a few of us knew each like Sarah and I knew each other for years mm -hmm. before. Then. And we also knew Cynthia, because Cynthia was a kid actress in New York. Oh, so got it. It, it. it was great. I mean, uh, you know, Kim and Kristen and, you know, I, I've known... I've known Evan and uh, and David Eigenberg. I've known them since I was a kid. Um, so it was really it was really quite special. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if we can keep it special. You know. Yeah. Oh well, it's going to be special no matter what. But I'm excited. There's something magical about about the cast about you guys. Um, I did want to ask since you've been in so many projects and are such a prolific actor. Is there anyone that you're dying to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Wow, well, I mean, uh, I worked with a lot of great people. I have to kind of like be realistic about, you know, my age and the next generation. Like I'd love to work with Lupita Nyong'o. I'd love to work with uh, Daniel, I'm going to mess up his last name, Delulu, Kalulu, or... Oh, yes, uh-huh. I mean, these are amazing actors. I'd love to work with uh, Anya Taylor-Joy. Mm -hmm. uh, I love her so much, I can't even... Um, you know, there's a lot of great actors uh, that... You know, and then, then there's the... Also, I'll say, I'll say the, the real corny, heartfelt thing, but... And every actor that I work with, I'm thrilled to work with. I, I, I love actors. Mm -hmm. actors, good actors. Mm -hmm. Good actors stick out like a sore thumb, you know? Uh, and I, I like people who take it seriously and care about diving into a story and communicating it. One of my favorites, uh, my, my, my managers actually represent her. I'd love to work with Renee Zellweger. Oh. Um, you know, like actors who really jump in. That's my thing. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. I honestly would love, and I almost had the opportunity we met a number of times on the Casino. I would really like to work with De Niro before it's too late. Um, and, uh, you know, there's people like that, legends who are going to go away yeah. at some point. Um, that would be great. Uh, you know, Helen Mirren, I'd love to work with. Um, uh, Olivia Coleman. I would love to work with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'd like to work with the entire cast of the Crown. Oh. oh my gosh! Well, and, and each of the each of the different sets of casts have been wonderful too. Yeah. Totally, totally. This this last one was the greatest. Oh no! I mean, it's it's just so captivating, and it's, it's I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that on streaming television you can watch everything at once. So. You don't have anything to look forward to anymore. It's, 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 a, it's the constant argument. It's yes or no. It's both of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. like, I, like I have to wait a week for the next episode of Below Deck Mediterranean, but I can watch an entire... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, that's a little insane when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it, it, it seems like there's I'm an imbalance there. Below deck. I love Below Deck. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it's the best. It's the best worst show that I watch. <laughs> they have some really good characters. We actually did um, a happy hour for our Walt brand with Captain. Um, oh my gosh, uh, Captain, Captain Lee. Captain Lee. Captain Lee. I thought you were going to say Captain Sandy. No, no. Seems more like I'd love to pop this bottle of wine. Captain Lee me seems more like, you know, a bottle of bourbon and a peanut. He's like, pretty. Yeah, he's pretty, um, he's pretty even keeled, but he has some fun too. He's, um, he's got a fun side to him, but it, he yeah. also, yeah, he just is kind of like your, I don't know, your uncle who's got really great stories to tell you, I think, is what he seems like. Um, okay, but I do have another question for you because you're not just famous for being an actor, but you're also like a winning poker player and poker is something that I've played before, but I really don't know very well. And I would love to know from you, like, how did you get so good? Do you think that you're just really good at seeing people's tells or, you know, well, what? My father, my father, because he was an entitled, like, mob kid, he gambled a lot. And so when I was growing up, um, that's what we did. Like, other families played Monopoly and the Game of Life or whatever. 
We played poker and blackjack only. Got it. Cool. Because um, it was cheaper. All you needed was a deck of cards. No. Um, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, so we, I gambled my whole life. And then gambling became, poker became really popular about 10 years ago mm -hmm. when it really exploded. Uh, I was on a show called Celebrity Poker Showdown. Right. You like won the first episode, I think. Yeah. That, didn't you? It was on yeah. Bravo, and we we were the first show. Uh, we showed the cards, we showed the whole cards to people watching, and like a few weeks later, they were like, "Oh my god, this is brilliant!" And World Poker Tour did it, and then poker exploded, like websites and every you know. Then it became like a thing, and so what's been great because of that it, up until today, even that there's a lot of poker to play. It's it's everywhere. Pandemic has been amazing. I, I'm in three poker games on Zoom. We play, you know, three times a week. Fantastic. It's been it's been a lifesaver. That's amazing that you guys premiered something on Bravo that then has influenced the rest of the game to be able to show the cards. That it's amazing. No one really talks about it because the big deal was – Obviously, much larger audience was when World Poker Tour did it. Right. But we did it first, and it was a big deal. And so it That's changed cool. the game. It changed the game because who wants to watch a bunch of people staring at their cards and then raising or folding, whatever? Right. If I know what your cards are, it's like, oh my God, he's raising with that, or he has no cards. That's how much he should raise. You know, whatever. It's, it, it changes everything. You know, but it probably also changes research too. Like if you're going to be competing against someone, you want to watch maybe old com competitions they've been Absolutely. in. I then mean, you, you kind of know if they're lying or what their strategies are. But you know, there's certain people you could, you know, when you sit down at a table and you don't know anybody, mm -hmm. you know pretty quickly, like, oh, she's really aggressive. She, oh. she really, she's raised for the last four hands, she's raised every time. So now I know she raises every hand. Right, because she couldn't be, she couldn't have a good hand every time. It's more just Correct. her strategy. Correct. I mean, there's some players, there's one player in one of my games, he raises before the flop, you know, the common cards in the middle. Before any of those cards are showing, he raises before that every hand. Really? Now, if you have some, if anyone comes in and re-raises, he immediately folds. He doesn't have a hand every time. Um, so basically with him, all you got to do is pick your battles. So you just, let's say I have aces even, I'll just call his raise. Yeah. Let's let him get himself in trouble. That's yeah. the deal. So, you know, you, can, you, you learn how to read the table and read the people around the table. Yeah. That's so interesting. I mean, I'm sure all of your training, both from your, you know, undergrad degree and all of your acting, I'm sure has let you really understand people. And I know you said you learned how to gamble at an early age as well, but yeah, that makes sense that you'd be perfect at that. I also like a good amount of wine while I'm playing poker. <laughs> well, perfect. Um, it's, so, it's so social. It's so social. Yeah. You're all sitting around a table. You're all giving each other crap and like laughing at each other and, you know, and then it's like, oh, let's all have a, let's have a drink for the table. And like, yeah. Oh, and some, well, that's good to know. Maybe I can join here. a poker game and at least I can bring something to the table. Um, I'll, bring, I'll bring the wine and maybe then I'll be able to learn from the other folks. It's funny, you, you, you talked about that first episode of, uh, of um, a Celebrity Poker Showdown. Yeah. So it got down where there were only two people left. So heads up, uh, me and Ben Affleck. And I... I was drinking hard that day. And he was not drinking at all. And he was getting more and more angry as I was like having the time of my life. And I ended up winning and he, he didn't talk to me for like two years. Like, really? yeah. <laughs> you think that he would have been honored to be number two, but I guess not. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> well, he does seem like he'd be a competitive person too. He is. A, I mean, all poker players, I, I am too. We all are. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of wine, maybe I'll tell you about this wine that we're drinking here, too. Um, so this is a Zinfandel, and you talked about, um, yep, it's our Marvel Zinfandel. You talked about um, Prohibition, um, 
Zinfandel is actually the oldest grape in California because um, it was planted, it came over during the California gold rush is when it was planted. And um, it, um, it, it, it's really the oldest grape. And you know, in California, most of our grapes only last for 20 years, like Cabernet grapes, which I love. We also make a lot of Cabernet. Mm -hmm. You have to replant it. But for whatever reason, Zinfandel is really unique um, in California in that it, um, it just suits our soils really well. So you can get a hundred year old or even older vines that keep on getting more and more interesting. Um, so it's a part of our heritage in California. And so that's one of the reasons why I like Zinfandel. And also um, it's just a really unique, uh, a unique wine that I think is made in a lot of different ways, but I think it's got a lot of fruit and a lot of energy. And what yeah. I mean by that is um, acid, right? So it just has, a, it's just, it's very, um, it's very um, energetic. It's got a lightness to it um, that I really like, so. I mean, when, when I grew up, we would call it, this wine is very drinky. Mm -hmm. Like it's very yeah. drinkable. You don't feel it's, and it, you know, I don't know if you know this, but it's at an attractive price point. So, um, <laughs> no, but it's like, you could drink, you could drink this. Like, yes. it's not like so precious. It's not a precious. Yes, for sure. Um, it's interesting that you said that because when I used to be an exotic dancer, I used to dance under the name of the oldest grape in California. <laughs> and uh, like, they got no tips. I never got a tip, so I had to retire. <laughs> um, well, I would have really loved to see that. That sounds amazing. Privately, um, privately. I would have given you tips. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So someone just asked actually a question, which is, um, and let me know if this is too dorky, but they just asked what temperature you should serve. Um, why not? Willie, do you know if you could guess what like the ideal temperature is to store a red wine at? To store a red wine? I'm going yeah. to say, I'm going to say somewhere around 56 degrees. That's really impressive. It's 55. So that is really good. Dang. I'm super impressed. Wow. That that's that's, by the way, I'm impressed as well because <laughs> I really dragged that out of nowhere. <laughs> so, but, you know, but I thought, you know, not too cool and no fear. Let's like cool, like a yeah. cool temperature. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, wine is in your blood, as we now know. So that makes sense that you would know that. Just wine is in my blood right now. It's, it's like <laughs> more than my blood. <laughs> Um, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, basically when wine gets um, warmer, you, um, you lose some of the freshness and I, and obviously you don't want it to get too hot. Like if you live in a really hot area, you want to store wine in the coolest part of your house, whether it's a wine cellar or, you know, um, even if it has to be the fridge, you don't want it to get super hot because the cork can explode and then other things can happen to the wine. Yeah. Um, but 55 degrees is what the experts say you should store it at. And, um, and fun fact, in a wine glass, one of the reasons why wine glasses have um, a stem is so that you can actually hold the stem and that your hand doesn't actually heat up the wine. So, um, because it is something, if, you, if it gets too warm, um, it can, um, you know, just take away some of the freshness and the tasting experience. So. I mean, you never, you never hear, oh, you know, grandma's in the backyard boiling the wine. Like, you, ne you never hear that. <laughs> yeah, I guess unless she's making sangria or something, maybe. But, maybe, maybe. I don't think you mm -hmm. boil sangria either. Yeah, you're I think right. you, no, that sounds yeah. that that sounds wrong. That sounds wrong. <laughs> um, well, as someone asked where you can purchase this, um, you can purchase it at BacaWines.com, and we're, we are in a, a few select stores around the country. Um, or you can come visit us at one of our tasting rooms in uh, Northern California, like Healdsburg. Um, so Willie, I hear you're a really good sport, and you'd be willing to play a quick game with me called Would You Rather? I've got a few questions for you. Do it. Go for it. Okay. So, hard, hard question. Would you rather drink red wine or white wine? Red. Okay. Easy. It's, um, better. it's better. I mean, there's times when you drink white wine, but red wine is better. <laughs> All right, got it. <laughs> well, not that we're biased or anything. Um, okay. Would you, if you had to be another character on Sex and the City, would you rather be Miranda, Carrie, Charlotte, or um, uh, Samantha. Samantha, thank you. Um, I, I mean, I'll be politically correct and say I probably would want to be Carrie. 
Carrie seems like the most. I mean, it's hard. I'm best friends with her. My character's best friends with her. It's hard. It's hard to not say Carrie. Mm -hmm. That's true, and she is like the star of the show, so that makes sense. I mean, Samantha might have more fun, but I, I, I think I'm more fun. Okay. Um, if you had to relive an episode of White Collar, which episode would that be to go back in time? Jesus. That's hard because it was really like one long episode. Like the whole know, five the years episode or six years. seems like one long episode. Um, I really like for myself, and it's selfish. I really like the flashback episode when we meet us years before, like when I meet mm -hmm. Matt Damon. And like, we did it as a flashback and I'm wearing a hair piece, like I had hair. And also my son was in that episode. Oh. So, so that's, a, that's a good episode. Yeah. I thought you might've said the one episode that you directed too. Um, I would do that. I would, I would probably even do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard you did a great job. Um, I did no okay. case. Yeah. <laughs> um, a poker question for you: Would you rather have pocket aces or know your opponent's tell? Oh, pocket aces every day. I'll yeah, take, bet on I'll yourself. Take, yeah, I'll take luck. I'll take luck over skill any day. Any day. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I guess one last one. Um, this is a classic superpower question, but would you rather be invisible for a day or be able to fly for a day? Oh, the fly, obviously. Oh, really? Oh, oh. yeah. Do people say invisible instead of fly? I mean, <laughs> fly is like, come on, I'm going to go fly now. Like, yeah, well, like, no, I think there's some people who'd rather just, you know, be a fly on the wall, I think, rather than. Invisible. I don't know. The <laughs> um, well, there, was a, there was a famous there was a famous actor long before all of your time because you're all so young uh, named Jerry Lewis and Jerry course. Lewis had a terrible yes. ego terrible ego very difficult guy and what he used to do to be a fly on the wall he was famous for he'd go to meetings with a briefcase. And he would leave his briefcase and then come back 15 minutes later. I forgot my briefcase. In the briefcase is a tape recorder. He listened to what people said about him after he left the meeting. That's terrible. And that's like being a fly on the wall. That's true. Yeah. That's terrible. I can't believe that. Come on. It's pretty friggin' brilliant, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, actually. You can get that experience about actually. How yeah. to be invisible. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Um, although I would imagine after a few times people might catch on. Yeah. I was going to briefcase today. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, oh my gosh, we've already taken so much of your time. This has been so fun, Willie. I really appreciate getting together my, with you and my, chatting. My pleasure. My pleasure. And and full disclosure, uh, Baca and Hall uh, and Walt Wine sent me some wine, which is lovely. And uh I, I can honestly say I drink a lot of wine, and uh, these have been delightful. They're, they're really great, really great. Oh, thank you. Well, you're great, and I know you're coming up to the wine country area soon, so we, we're hoping we can twist your arm to come visit us. I think so. I, I'm, I'm going to try to. That sounds great. I know, okay. I know when to do it, too. I'm going to figure it out. Okay. I'll email everyone and figure it out. I hope so. Okay. Well, do you have any last um, thoughts for all of your fans who are watching you before you take off? Drink wine, drink good wine, and please everyone be safe and healthy and do everything. I don't want to say it in a way that gets me in trouble. Do everything that is recommended to help end this pandemic. And that may include some medical procedures involving a syringe. So I highly recommend that everyone uh, do what we need to do to take care of each other and yourselves. I second that. Well, cheers to you, Willie. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Hopefully see you soon. Bye. Bye. Well, that was so fun. For those of you guys who don't know us at Baco Lines, please be sure to follow us. We had such a blast today with Willie. He could just make me laugh all day long talking about all of his stories uh, from his career and his life and 
he is just such a charming, um, hilarious man. So please be sure to check out um, his projects as well as I think what we just learned here today is that the new Sex in the City um, show is being filmed. So I feel so excited and I know you all do too. So we'll see you soon and until next time.